Hey guys, Sam right here, back in with another episode of the Pokemon Sword and Shield series, Crown Zenith. In the last episode, Ash just got back from the Crown Tundra after helping out his friends Lily and Gladion with their Mon situation. Chase went through a breakthrough mentally with his battle style, and Elaine continued her training with Peony. Heads up, this video will be a bit different. It'll be a lot more like Zack's videos where multiple things happen, and it's kind of like smaller episodes in between one big episode. So, just a heads up. So upon Ash's first day back, this is when we would typically go through the story of the Isles of Armor. Of course, doing the three trials that you have to do. You have to catch a slowpoke, which Chase is very excited to do as he does it very easily. Catching the slowpoke, not catching it with a pokeball, but catching it physically, that took his hat before. Free does this with relative ease, along with Ash and Lucas not too far behind. Mustard is incredibly pleased by this, and then he sends them to go find Max Mushrooms. They do this incredibly well too. When Ash asks what the max mushrooms are for, this is when Mustard reveals that this will allow some of their Pokemon to Gigantamax, if they have the Gigantamax factor, of course. While Ash is thinking about which Pokemon he wants to give the suit to to Gigantamax, this is when Lucas already knows what Pokemon he's gonna give it to. He says that regardless of if this Pokemon can Gigantamax, it'll still be really strong. He reveals that he has a Gigalith and he immediately gives a Gigalith its suit. This is when Ash truly needs to think, and then he realizes something. The Pokemon that has the most innate potential out of all the Pokemon he has right now is Inteleon, so Inteleon gets the suit. For Chase, it was very easy, he decides to go with his partner Pikachu, of course. For Freed, he just gives it to his third Pokemon being Lucario, he didn't really have anything special on why. Now we can flip back to the uh, Crown Tundra, where Elaine is doing some training. She's having a battle with Rinto and truly getting to see how strong she's become. In a short amount of time, she's grown leaps and bounds and is incredibly satisfied with her growth. However, this is when Rinto calls the battle off, saying that he wanted to do some solo training as he wants to train something with Peony. Elaine agrees to this and then she gets to meet up with a trainer. This trainer having a Blast Toys and a Dragonite. This is when this trainer is to be revealed to be... War Turtle's parents trainer. Elaine at first is taken aback as she didn't expect to see the trainer here of all places and thought the trainer was long gone. This is when the trainer reveals himself to be Connor. Connor says that he left Squirtle there and that he didn't even know that they hatched an egg and that he was actually asking Elaine if they were willing to trade Squirtle back to him. Well, War Turtle at this point in time. When Elaine's confused, this is when he reveals a Pokeball, this Pokemon being Phantom. He says that Phantom can evolve after training into Trevenant and it will become incredibly powerful on her team. This is when Elaine looks to Wartoller, wondering if it really wants to go back with its parents. Wartoller and Elaine look at each other for a beat and then for another beat, and then this is when Elaine says no, saying that Wartoller I think is happy here, with Wartoller agreeing. However, she wants to learn one thing from War Turtle, a dragon type move. She wants to learn it from her father, from War Turtle's father, being Dragonite. Connor agrees to this and they start doing the training. He's trying to learn the move Dragon Pulse. War Turtle is unable to use the move due to its inexperience. However, Connor isn't frustrating, saying that War Turtle still has immense power for even being able to cultivate a dragon type move. However, they keep at it. This is when we can flip to another day on the Isles of Armor. This is when we see Chase just chilling out on the beach, training his Pokemon. He's training with Grotto specifically, trying to increase its strength and its defense. This is when out of all people, Irby comes onto the beach saying that they've noticed a massive spike of Aeos energy on the Isles of Armor and that he just came to see what it was all about. This is when he sees Grotto and wondering if it's the same Turtwig from the boat. He, he's amazed that Turtle grew into such a reliable grotto, and this is when Chase gives somewhat of a smug smile back to Irby, remarking on how strong he's trained it. But this is when on both cases, as both of these events are happening on the same day, a Gigantamax Bolt comes down and hits two Pokemon individually. These two Pokemon being Audino in the Crown Tundra's giant sped, and Tentacool in the Isles of Armor. In the Isles of Armor, when they're trying to face off against Tentacruel, this is when both Freed and Mustard run out. They're incredibly concerned as they just heard a huge crash come outside. This is when they see the giant Tentacruel, and Freed is wondering how can a Pokemon Dynamax without a Wishing Star or in a Dynamax raid. This is when Chase educates them on what a Gigantamax Bolt is. He explains that there were this weird weather phenomenon that appeared when they were midway through their journey. It always happens to somebody in close proximity of a Dynamax band. Chase looking at his. 
He's saying that this Pokemon can cause any Pokemon to Dynamax and go crazy. Their Dynamax level winds up to the max and they're super hard to stop. This is when they do a raid battle here. Irby actually joins in with his Elekid. It's an intense battle for sure as it's a raid battle, but there are and but they do end up getting the W. But in this battle, this is when Tor this is when Grotto finally evolves into Torterra. Now we can go into the Crown Tundra Giant's bed. This is when both P this is when both Peony and Peonia join a lane as she's facing off against this Audino. This Audino is massive and is causing a massive amount of damage. However, they all decide to do a raid battle once again, with Connor joining in with Dragonite. The battle is incredibly intense due to Audino's beefy defense. However, this is when Elaine's War Turtle evolves into Blastoise, fully mastering Dragon Pulse and knocking out Audino. Elaine ends up actually catching this Audino to add to her team. Both of both Elaine and Chase, while they're not together, are both incredibly happy with their turtle Pokemon evolving into their final forms. <laughs> Elaine says farewell to Connor as he has to head back to his home region and is glad that Dragonite and Blastoise's child turned out to be- Connor's just happy that his, that his Blastoise and Dragonite's child turns out to be such a strong Pokemon, and Elaine smiles knowing this. On the next day, we can focus on Ash training with his Pokemon team. He wonders why Cinderace wants to train by itself and doesn't even want to train with anybody else. Ash truly gets to learn what Cinderace is like after it evolved. Cinderace is one of Ash's most prideful Pokemon that he's ever had in the history of all his Pokemon. He's even more prideful than Charizard was in the OS series. Cinderace desperately wants to prove his strength against its rivals, its rivals in this case being Gallade, owned by Rinto, and Samurott, owned by Lucas. It wants to surpass all its rivals and truly attain true strength. However, Kung Fu looks up to Ash's Cinderace a lot, noting that it has incredible strength and that it's very prideful in itself. It looks to Ash's Cinderace for leadership, however, Ash's Cinderace is more of a loner type, so he goes into the woods of the Isles of Armor to train by himself. Ash thinking that this is for the best, as Cinderace knows how to take opponents now, but he just wants to train by himself, and Ash is fine with this. He ends up training with Cub Fu, and due to Cub Fu's nature with having insane potential, it ends up catching up to Ash's Pokemon super quickly. It becomes really strong in a short amount of time compared to all of other Ash's Pokemon. Now we can go to Lucas on the other side of the island with Mustard. He's trying to use the white band that was given to him by his father after he defeated him. He's trying to use a Z move, this being the Fighting MZ and the Fighting Z move a la Pummeling. They're trying to get it down pat. This is when. This is when he notices that his Hisuian Samurai also likes to train by itself, very similar to Cinderace. It's very prideful and it only has one real desire to actually truly defeat Ash's Cinderace at full power as they've only tied and they've never actually fought each other at full power and he's trying to attain as much strength as possible. Lucas smiles knowing this and then he gets right back to training with Mustard, trying to bring out Kafu's true potential and learning this Z-move. He's borrowing the Fighting MZ from Mustard in order to attain this strength. Now we can head to Luke. Now we can head up with Chase and Freed. Chase and Freed are just talking around the island and getting a good jog in with their Pokemon. Freed talks about how his dream is to just become a professor and explore the world with his friends. That's why he came to the Isles of Armor to gain the strength with him, Cap, Lucario, and Charizard. Chase finds that goal pretty cool, but he says that his only real goal up to this point is to defeat Leon and become the Gather League champion. When Freed asks what he's going to do after that, Chase is kind of speechless, but he says that he has no time to worry about that, saying that right now he needs to focus on the Gather League and attaining as much strength as possible, along with truly defining his battle style. Here's when we can go back to the Crown Tundra. This is when we get to see Rinto and Peony. Rinto has increased his strength by leaps and bounds as he's training right behind a big pink tree that he doesn't know the name of, but he su but Peony suggested that would be the best place to train due to the high level Pokemon there. He's doing incredibly well, but this is when he notices three bird-like Pokemon. These, third these three bird-like Pokemon being Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno respectively. He sees the three Pokemon going towards the tree and then changing. Articuno flies off further into the Crown Tundra, Zapdos goes towards the Isles of Armor along with Moltres. He doesn't know it yet but he will face one of these birds and he'll find out pretty soon. As he's heading back, he sees Articuno thinking that this would be the best way to test his strength. This is when Peony, who is following him without him knowing, says that if he can defeat Articuno, he's finally ready to receive his graduation gift. 
This is when Rinto goes full force into a battle with Articuno. Articuno is a psychic type now and is incredibly tough. It uses duplication along with its other techniques to order to subdue Rinto. However, Rinto is not your average opponent and is able to subdue Articuno. He doesn't catch it, but Articuno manages to fly away as Rinto looks on in amazement that he defeated another legendary Pokemon. This is when Peony gives him a stone. He gives him two stones to be exact, saying that now he's finally ready to become in true sync with Glade. As Ash and Lucas are training at the opposite sides of the island, this is when both Zapdos coming towards Ash and Moltres coming towards Lucas decide to challenge them to a battle as these Pokemon have become incredibly territorial and rash now. The battle is intense on both sides as both trainers have to give their all. Ash's Cub Fu ends up carrying the team along with Lucas's Cub Fu. However, they're about to lose until Cinderace and Samurott stepped into their respective trainers and end up defeating both Zapdos and Moltres in one shot, with Samurott using Ceaseless Edge and Cinderace using Pyro Ball. Cub Fu is now ready and more willing than ever to take its final test at the Tower of Water and Darkness respectively depending on which one Ash and Lucas choose. They end up going back to the dojo and having a conversation with Mustard. Mustard saying that he'll test Lucas first as, te as technically Lucas has been on the island longer than Ash because Ash left to go to the Crown Tundra. Ash is fine with this but Mustard tells them to make the decision of which power they want to be tested, saying that Chase is also free to make a decision as he's approaching his graduation as well. Chase truly thinking about this for a minute, Ash comes up with an answer on the spot, saying that he'll go to the Dark Tower, saying that Cub Fu's battle style is more of a one-shot style and he's seen what a single strike Urshifu looks like. With Lucas saying that he'll go to the Rabbit Strike style, as that since Cub Fu looks up, since his Cub Fu looks up to Lucas's Samurott so much, it wants to have the same ceaseless drive that Samurott has. So it's going to the Rapid Tower to become a Rapid Strike Urshifu. As Chase is about to copy Ash, he looks defiant and says that he isn't going to either, saying that he and Cub Fu are strong enough now and that he doesn't really need to change at this point in time. Ash is incredibly proud along with Mustard, however Mustard says that his graduation battle will be between him and Freed, a full power 3-on-3 three -three battle with Chase agreeing, saying that they'll do the 3-on-3 three -three battle first and then they'll do the power challenge. E everyone agrees to this and they get ready to do the 3-on-3 three -three challenge, but before that we can go back to the Crown Tundra. This is when we see Elaine and Peonia having to face off two trials on their own. This being the Regieleki and Regidrago respectively. Both of them need to defeat these Pokemon in order for Peony to see them as worthy of receiving their graduation gift. Peonia has some trouble with Regidrago, but she's able to get her head into the game and her and Tyrantrum along with her Garchomp prevail as successful. They actually end up catching Regidrago to give it to Peony to study. This is when we go back to Elaine and she's struggling a lot. She just caught Nidoqueen but doesn't really know how to use her yet. She's using both Nidoqueen and Autono. While this may seem like a risky move to a bunch of other trainers, Elaine realizes that as a Pokemon trainer and if she wants to become a if Elaine wants to become a gym leader, she's gonna have to learn how to use a variety of Pokemon really fast and really quickly. She ends up being able to catch Regieleki and gives it to Peony. Peony says that he's a Peony says that he's proud of all of them, that they've all made strides, and now, with one day left before they have to leave, he gives them each six stones. He gives he gives Rinto a Galeta Knight and a Keystone, he gives Pio Peonia a Garchompa Knight and a Keystone, and he does the same for Elaine, but she allows Elaine to choose between a Visora Knight, a Blastoise Knight, or a Char Knight Y or Char Knight X. She actually ends up choosing the Charnard Y, saying that she's excited to see what Charizard will look like, and they spend the rest of the day training with their new Pokemon. This is when we can go back to the Isles of Armor for the last time. This is when we get to see the battle between Freed and Chase go at full power. Freed is not willing for a second, giving all that he got. He's using Charizard first, and a and Chase sends out his trusty Pokemon being Piplup. Now you may think that Piplup may be in a mismatch here, but Chase's Piplup has come leaps and bounds and is able to actually tie with Charizard, as everyone's kind of surprised by this, including Free. However, Free does not want to give up and he sends out his Pikachu next. This is when Chase sends out his Pikachu. Chase is truly showing off what he's learned from Mustard as they've recently had a lot of talks and Chase has been waking up late in the morning and staying up late at night to truly find his battle style as quick as possible and he's doing incredibly well. His Pikachu uses a new move 
instead of using Rock Smash or Iron Tail that he got from Ash's Pikachu, he uses the move Brick Brick and ties with Captain Pikachu. Now it's the final battle. It's Freed's Lucario versus Chase's Monferno. Monferno is still shy, but it remembers Inteleon and when Inteleon taught it about not being shy and growing past your fear. It finally decides to use its brave nature and decides to fight. It goes incredibly hard and it ends up evolving into Infernape. Everyone's incredibly surprised by this and he uses its new move, Close Combat, in order to defeat Lucario. Freed was sad that he lost, but he's incredibly happy for Chase. He actually apologizes to Chase again, thinking that when he first met him, he just felt like another rookie trainer, but he's incredibly proud of Chase and his progress. He says to he says to Chase to hopefully reach his dream, and now that they can watch Ash and Lucas climb up the tower. The tower challenge is as simple as this, they need to travel up and beat 5 trainers with just their kung fu. Luckily this is Ash and Lucas, and they end up soaring through this very easily. However, Mustard had a different plan for them. Instead, after they climbed up the tower, they would have to head back to the dojo. Mustard will use both his rapid strike and his single strike urshifus against his urshifu. Against their kubfus, my bad. The battle is incredibly tense and dynamic, with both kubfus remembering their role model being Cinderace and Samra, respectively. With both of them trying their hardest, they end up pulling out a win and they look at their scrolls, evolving into single strike for Ash and rapid strike for Lucas. Everyone's happy for them, along with Mustard. He's saying that they've achieved the leaps and bounds and that today, his wife Honey and his son made a stew and that they all can pig out today. Everyone's celebrating and Ash is excited, knowing that the next time that he and Lucas fight, it's going to be in the league. This is when we go back to the Crown Tundra, as all of them have mastered, at least Rinto has mastered Mega Evolution, with Peonia and Elaine not being far behind. Everyone's incredibly happy and Peony says that he can't wait for his brother's project to come to fruition so these kids can live in a world without worry. This is when we actually see a news crew come onto the Crown Tundra, wanting to interview some gym challengers, knowing that gym challengers were out here. They wanted to interview Rinto as he's a favorite to win. Rinto says a bunch of cheesy and corny one-liners, but he ends up he ends up ending his sentence with that he'll know that he'll win. They actually end up going to the Isles of Armor to interview Ash and Lucas respectfully, and they each say that they're excited to win and they're excited to go all out in the league. Now we can go to Peonia and Elaine having a conversation. Peonia says that when she started her journey, she kind of just did it to find more fossil Pokemon and just for fun, but now she actually likes battling. And she says that it's probably thanks to Elaine, Rinto, and Ash. She's saying that she can't wait to go into the league and try her best, even if she doesn't win. She knows that Elaine will become a great gym leader. Elaine is incredibly happy by this, and when she asks what Peonia's dream is, Peonia says that she probably wants to become a professor. She says that battling was never her true profession, but again, she learned to love it. She even talks about her little sister, who goes to some fancy prep school in another region. However, she says that her sister is a big fan of Evie and is rooting for Elaine, as sad as that is, she isn't rooting for her own older sister. They each promise not to give up on their dreams, and this is when we can end the arc. However, before we end the episode, this is when we get to see AZ in the kind of back streets of Winden. AZ's talking about how when he released the ultimate weapon back all those millennia ago, it worked as two things. It worked as the genesis of Mega Evolution, but also a signal. A signal that sent for a Pokemon that they would never see on their darkest day. This Pokemon being Eternatus. Rose getting to finally see footage of Eternatus after using the Gigantamax bolts to gather energy faster. Rose reveals that he's been using the Dynamax bands as ways to generate energy to send another signal to Eternatus. As Eternatus was never really defeated as he was just dismayed as the energy that the ultimate weapon released was perfect for it as Eternatus is a Pokemon that feeds off energy, specifically infinity energy. But since such a surge of infinity energy just dissipated, Eternatus was maddened by this event and caused the genesis of Dynamax and Gigantamax Pokemon. This is when we see Sword and Shieldbird after hearing that, but they've also revealed two Ultra Balls, Swordbird having Zacian uncrowned and Shieldbird having, having Zamazenta uncrowned. 
And next time on the Pokemon Sword and Shield series, Crown Zenith will tackle the league. Yeah, this episode was twice as long as your average episode, as I think it was my mistake of making the arc three episodes long. It probably should have been four, as it would have been better paced out, but that'll be something I'll learn in the future. With all that being said, thanks for watching. Samurai out.